Morning, morning. Trevor Barnard here. Come to do some small woman's business. I'm going this morning to Kitson Town. We're traveling to visit a farmer. He's having some mortalities with his goats. Um, young kids dying and you know, I'm going there to see if I can help him. He's one of the farmers who recently started and you know, been watching the YouTube and was encouraged by that to start his goat farm. Let's take a look and see if we can help him today. Oh, um, no, we are at, um, this is Peter, Peter, um, Peter Farm, and um, right now we're going to take a look, we are in Kitson Town, we are in a truck garage, and I see a lot of Mack trucks around the place, and Peter here tell me, says him cousin run, the nephew, the nephew run the trucking operation, yeah. so Peter does pigs, goat. goat, and you just started the goat operation, yeah, and we have started rabbit, and we have a one cow. Yo, you start with rabbit and him have a one cow, so he's into the farming thing and I see you have banana and corn and all kind of things around him. Yeah, so let us take a look at his farm, you know. So this is Peter's, one of his slotted floor that him just started recently. Um, as you can see, he's using old pallet to build this, um, this pen and look like a nice little setup. You know, Peter, some of the farmers, you know, when I talk to them, they tell me that, you know, it is too expensive yeah. to build a goat pen. But we can use waste material yes, and build it. Use waste material. Yeah, because if you look right over here, Peter, he has a whole heap, a whole pallet and a whole board everywhere. Mm -hmm. And him get these whole posts. Post. What kind of lumber is this? This looks like the tough, tough wood. Yeah, um, tough wood. What do you call them tough wood again? Um, Lagood. Lagood, right. Yeah. He's using Lagood and you see him just putting up his goat pen here. Yeah. And all of this is pallet board he's using and you know, very, very nice little setup. So now he can move in and start doing him little goat farming and, and I'm sure that this don't really cost your arm and a leg no. because it's really mostly your labor mostly cost. Labor and nail. Labor and nail it is going to cost Classic. him. And, and it makes your life a lot easier in terms of maintaining the animals and you know, and not having them in the mud and the dirt and yeah. so forth. So let's look now at his already built goat pen and his establishment and what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. See these boys in the next one? Stand up and you don't stand up unless it breaks, you know? Yeah, for no overstep, you know, because we're going to reinforce it as yet. Want to reinforce. Yeah, reinforce. So now, now we are up into his pen, and you know, he says he hasn't really completed, you know, he has to reinforce some of these boards. Yeah. So when you use the pallet boards, you have to put a lot more reinforcement on it. In the middle, for in keep, the, in the middle for keep it str strong and firm. Mm -hmm. And if you come up and you look inside his pen, well, we're, going, yep. we're going to go inside there a little after this. What he uses, he uses pallets to do all his partition yes. and you know the flooring and everything, even the roof. He use um, the same what? Logwood. Logwood and sweet wood. He use logwood and sweet wood in the roof to make all the, 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 the top structure. So very, very economical. He's not spending a whole heap of money to build something like this. Um, so Peter, when I, when I look at your animals, you see, yes. first thing I'm going to tell you is that it seems like, you know, the nutrition, the nutrition is not as good as it needs to be. 
Oh, you see, you see, like all this mother here. Yeah. You know, she can hardly manage this kid because her nutrition is not up. What are the things that you feed your animals on? How you, how, what, you, what is your feeding feeding program like? They use the cut, the, the guinea grass. Mm -hmm. Cut sensi beetle down. Mm -hmm. May I have to give them like the mango, the apple, mm -hmm. and I let them out like three hour or two a day. Okay. Because they have a lot of farm around here and we can't too let them out. Right. With them going on. Uh, people and people, people grown. grown. Right. Because it's a little yeah. farming community. Yeah, it's a little farming community. Right. So I have to let them out and watch them like three hour or two. I make them. Back, so they don't get as much feeding. Feeding. Right. Now and then we give them like a bag feeding. Mm -hmm. like every day. Uh, every day, no one then give them a bag for me. Now, Peter, one of the things I'm going to get into you with you now is the mango, the guinea, you feed them with guinea, guinea mango, yeah. aki, and these kind of plants. These are actually not good forages to feed the goats with. That is one of the problems with it. Um, some time ago, because I used to feed my animals with the, with the mango leaf a lot too sometimes, which was not a good thing and I learned afterwards. Yes. What happens is that I, I remember cutting down a mango tree once and I was feeding the animals with the tree for about two, three days and I actually noticed that the urine started to change to a reddish color light and that's not a good thing. I always tell farmers that you have to watch the, the urine and the feces and see the condition. You must have nice round pellets and you know that situation. Yes. So what happened? Mango, guinea, aki leaves, even the aki pods. I've seen farmers feed them with aki pods. It's not really very nutritious for the animals. It don't have a lot in it to, 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 to give them. So I always tell in farmers to feed them with tree forages. But there's a problem with some forages. Some forages. Yes, it's not everything is good for the goat. You also have some poisonous plants out there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I remember like nightshade. Nightshade is one of them. It's a vine looking thing and I think you have different variety yeah, of it. Yeah, me and know, me know it. You know nightshade. Yeah, me know nightshade? Guess what happened with nightshade? The goats will go out there and eat it because there's a certain time when it can be eaten. Mm -hmm. But certain times... It cannot be eaten. It, yes, it will kill the animals. And I'm talking yeah. deadly. So I've known farmers who go and cut nightshade and carry it and feed the animals and the animals just drop dead. Yeah. So it's a very dangerous um, plant. So you have some poisonous plants that you know you, you really have to stay away and there are certain plants that you have to stay away it's not every tree forage is good for the animals also the toxicity of the of the the aki it's poisonous actually and these are some poisonous plants it has a lot of tannin in it and it um and and it can poison the animals so one of the things i think is happening with you is that otherwise from having a nutrition problem you are also might be poisoning the animals. In other words, you can have abortions, you can have miscarriages, you can have these things when you give them these kind of plants. For example, you know broom 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 weed. Yeah. You know broom weed. Yeah. Broom weed is also another poisonous plant to animals to, to these goats. But them can eat broom weed. Yes, them can eat a certain amount of it. You know, because I see them eat it all the time. Yes. But if them eat too much of it. It, it drive it cause neural problems mash up them Absolutely. nerves and you will see all of, a sheep i've seen it in sheep especially mm -hmm. you see them all start to walk and just spin around in a circle and they go on like they are crazy because we did have one of them just spin around and just drop on there him just spin around right usually sometimes those are poisoning you know poisons so you see when you have a, a, a animal that is hungry and starving sometimes they'll go and eat the poisonous plants and that's the problem with with it you know so we have to be careful of how we eat. So you will see an animal out there eating a plant, you know. But if you cut it and carry it to them, it it's poisonous. It. Because these animals are very smart, you know. So they know what to eat and, and how to much eat. we eat. And, yeah. you know, the weeds and so forth. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have some weeds and things inside the grass, you know. Mm -hmm. You and know the, the tree with them called Basida? Basida, yes. Right, okay. Which one? Seed right here. Yeah. Seed right here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Them, them love it a lot, but you know, to give them from an unethic. Yes, basida can, 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 um, you can feed them with the basida. Yes, yes. Yes, but always remember though, 
you must you must do it in 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 moderation. moderation. Don't you can't overfeed them with grass, mm -hmm. any amount of grass. But you see your tree forages, especially some of them. Yes. You have to be you have to moderate how much you give them. Like even wild tamarind, I mm -hmm. feed my animals with wild tamarind. But wild tamarind has the tannin in it, and it is very you know, it, it's very it, it's also can harm the animals if you them. overfeed it. So I see farmers who feed them animals with one hundred percent wild tamarind. But it's not a good idea. You know, you need to, you know, you need to gauge what you're doing. So I think your mortality is having to do with that. You understand? The mm -hmm. plants you're feeding them, you're giving them a lot of those kind of plants that don't have any nutritional value, you know. So that, that, that I think is your problem. When you let them out and they go out there and forage and eat on them own, them smart enough and know what to do. Right. But Peter, how you started this goat operation? How you really? Why you, you start this? Because I go and look at your pig operation you know, now. Say, um, the, the neighbor mm -hmm. say, I look some goat to buy, and a lady tell me, say, I bread have some goat. Mm -hmm. So, I buy a goat in some, come with him. Right. So, I go with him. So, he knows me to have money. Mm -hmm. So, the man sell me six of the goat. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm come and just get to love it. So, I start. Follow up you on YouTube now. Right, okay. Come have them on the ground and we start follow it up on the wheel. We are talking about the goat and mm -hmm. the good business and thing. Mm -hmm. So by going and going, we start by one one tell me introduce my nephew mm -hmm. to it and I talk to him about it and he said, Alright, I'm going to me get some. Right. And okay. we come together and we start getting the goat there. This is a good look because you start with um, with good management with your with your slatted floor facility. So this is a rain and you know all of mm -hmm. the internal parasites problem. You will you'll cut down and all of that. And to me, what you need to do now is improve on your nutrition. Okay. And then once you improve on your nutrition in, in the animals, you know you will you you will see um thing there because you know it's a nutrition problem I problem. think you have here. So you go and get abortions. You go and get kids you know not mothers not being able to feed the animals yeah, that, that take right. place. because you see you need you this need a lot have, this mother may have a whole her mm -hmm. she feed the kid right because what happened she's she she she, she don't have the nutritional value is not there to feed it she don't and have enough feed it. Fear kid because we don't know around with yesterday me use lose fear kid yeah and the day before me lose that little one over there kid the one will lie down Mm -hmm. But she we let, let me let her out mm -hmm. and she run. She have a kid, but two, she at first she go have kid. Mm -hmm. So she run with the kid in her. Mm -hmm. By the time I reach her, kid already dead. And by my son come call me and I reach out, yeah. Kid mm -hmm. already dead. Right. So your management have to be there. You have to watch them and kind of know. You're going to see them kind of start to drain and so, so you will know that them will have the kid. And sometimes you have to just, you know, mm -hmm. put them one side and feed them and, and so forth. And when they have the kid, like when you don't have good... She have two and I lose it two of them for the car. They look like them born premature. Yes, yes. It's the feeding, the nutrition. And then with, with bad nutrition, mm -hmm. internal parasites will take over your herd. You know, the worm, the internal yeah. worm. And they're yes. going to have to do a lot of worming and all of that. So you have to keep the animals healthy mm -hmm. with good food. Yes. It's just like we, you know, if we don't feed with body good, we get sick. It's the same thing happen with the animals. We have space so we can get grass in a butter, just three vehicles down Vehicle, down. right, right. You're looking at these animals, right? You see the black pigmentation? When you're buying the goats, all right, you see that goat there? She have a more pinkish pigmentation. That one over there, the white one. The white one. Yeah, you notice how the nose pink. Yes. All right? I personally stay away. See that one now, she pink? I, I, I stay away from that white and pink um, pigmentation because, as you know, the black pigmentation can manage the sun more, than, more. The, than the white pigmentation, right? Uh, this one here. Yes, so you see them black pigmentation, mm. I, I, I prefer that uh, when it's even darker, you know, branches color. But you know, you see you have some of them white till it pink, mm -hmm. when those goats go out in the sun, they get cancer easy, right? Just like in our in people, same thing. So just hold one of them now and, and we're going to look on the eye. So what happened now? You peel back the eye and look at it. Me show you. Me show right, you. right, right. Check the fermentation. So this is called the fermentation, right? Now, you see how that look pinkish? Yeah. Right. So it must have a pink, bright, pink, rich color. Now, let's look at some others. 
I want it. You see, if you look at the back and you peel it back and it look white. Yes. It means that the animal is anemic. You see, that is not as pink. It's a little lighter, mm -hmm. but she's not bad. Take, take another one. So this is how you know that that, that the worm is taking over. So these animals kind of is, is basically kind of all right. Is it uh, pink? Yeah. Pink. All right. So uh, these seem to be okay. So, and then these native goats are very strong and resilient, you know? So when you go in your pen, you're not going to try and worm everybody. Yes. Like what I hear people love to, love to, um... This one a pink too. Right. So you notice how some of them have a richer pink color and some of them have a, the richer the pink is a stronger immune system inside of them is. I'll, him, him go look good. All right, you see? Mm -hmm. All right, look at that one, you know. She, she hungry. She have a kid right there. Right, so you see, I just look at us a few of them, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think they are worm burdened. I don't think you have a worming problem. And you know why you don't have a worm? Because you have them on the slatted floor. Okay. And you, not, you don't have them in a mud and water. Because that's what kill them off, you know. People love to tell me about rearing goats in and the old time days rear them in the dirt and the mud and things. But you see, first time you never have so much people, you never have so much yeah. building, you never have so, so much, much. So, so infestation get high. Mm -hmm. That's what changes, you know. Infestation, disease, all of these things increase, you know. And it causes a problem. So, so I just feed them one. It's feed right food you got them one. I don't have to really look for all of them. Yes. I feed the goat they want. They want to feed them. And they don't get good feed. Good feed. You know, it's like if a man healthy, go around the healthy place. Diet. Healthy diet. Mm -hmm. If you sit down and you eat rice every day, you're not healthy. Mm -mm. Your system will break. I just belly full. Yeah. Well, that's what you're doing. You just give them belly full every day. So, them want some of the forages that them love. So, you see, like how you said to me now, say, you never know about that tree then. Yes. Just chop it. Like yeah, chop off the limb. Don't carry it in your hand, give them. Just chop two limbs and make it drop on the ground. And when you let them out, them go, they go eat it. That is all right. Because mm -hmm. if they don't like it. I'm going to chop off some, you know, pudding with. Pudding with. Chop off some pudding with. You see, yes. Yeah, I'm going to let them out, them not go around, then just where they go eat. Listen, you see, all pudding with now? Mm -hmm. And the bars that high in a protein. You understand? High in protein. But. With those plants that are high in protein, like the pudding waste, it don't have enough fiber in fiber it. Night. So that's where the grass come in. So you need a balanced diet of the tree forages, which I like to talk about, but not poisonous Fire tree forage. forage. You want good forages because it's not everything out there is good. Okay. So you want to feed them now like the pudding waste, that, 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 that are good food for them, you know. All right, so let's look at your rabbit thing. You know, you run out. I did have um, a portion of rabbit, but I come from work one day and see three quarters of them it. on the side. Mm -hmm. What do you feed them on? Um, feed them on Guinea, um, to them call grass, um, Spanish needle, mm -hmm. fat and barrow, mm -hmm. and we give them some meringue now and then, mm -hmm. and bag feed. Which bag feed do you give them? Give them the rabbit feed. Okay. But a guy tell me says eat chew. Oh yeah, that can cause it. Because chew me have the zinc and it's so low and the low zinc. Yes, that can cause so, it. So what you can do now, chew. put put some cardboard box on and eat and it. it. Yeah, you can put cardboard box on and eat it and, and mm. thing there. So they have to have the water all the time. Yes. And and so when them get hot, it can deal with it. You can also use those like what you coconut. Coconut. Coconut yeah, yeah. So what yeah. I plan to do, I plan to build. I'm not gonna move this pen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build it over there. Put it under a tree. I'm going to build it over there. So, but I'm going to build, build a shed, a big shed. Mm -hmm. And build it right there inside of the shed. Just like when you see the guy who are clearing them. Mm -hmm. Some of the rabbit shit. The JSH? Yes, the rabbit shit. So I want a couple of the feeder from him. Because I plan to go big in at this. Mm -hmm. Why you want to go big in, big in to rabbit rearing? Really? Because rabbit, rabbit wearing, mm -hmm. you can make money off of it. And a good business. Okay, how where are you going to find your market? How are you plan to I do don't that? Part? Cause that part sort of it is a... the market as yet, but mm. by growing 
we will continue and look at the market. Yeah. And try and get some contact with other rabbit farmers. Mm. Try and if you're going to grow it though, try and try and stick to um stick to natural feeding. Like I would encourage you to plant I don't know if you have any plant um some some um uh, mulberry tree mulberry tree and the and the um tricantier and the tricantier tri you know the tricantier and i don't know it you know the mulberry yes okay, you have so um so peter yes, thank you for inviting me to your farm i hope i helped you with you know the discussions yes. we had yes, man. yeah man and the next time i come here i want to hear you growing strong i know me afraid to call me and for yeah. advice and support as we go that one you know, is uh very i want to grow strong yeah man I want to grow strong and uh, agriculture can't feel it. Can't feel it. Everybody has to eat. I want to grow strong, All strong, right. strong. Alright, so everyone, thank you for watching. Please continue to subscribe to my channel and be good. So Peter also rear pigs. So let's look at some of his pigs. He has some little young pigs here. Yeah. Peter, these look like they have some of the, the common yeah, pig yeah. in them. Yeah, the brand where the brand. Mm -hmm. this matter, the common brand. Oh the common brand. Why yeah. you do that though? It's it's you get good results from it or yes. Mm -hmm. You keep them going a little faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you feed them on? Just bag feed? feed. Straight bag feed. Straight bag feed. Yeah, we don't mix them feed. Okay. Straight bag feed. Mm -hmm. And the walk don't come. Down. So. so I ten, the money at 10 weeks. I at 10 weeks, so. Okay. So you sell them at this young age? Yes. Okay, you don't really grow out of fat. <laughs> or you just breed? Breed. Okay. Yeah, this is your market. Like people just come here and buy from you. Yeah, I have a market in I have a main shop in You have people buying young pigs, all the way from Chile. Oh. I have young people who come from Chile and they are here to buy 30, 40, 50 young pigs. Oh, and just grow them out yeah. for the market. I okay. sign every winners, mm -hmm. you just sell them as winners. So you sell them at six weeks? At six weeks. Okay. So you make a better money. Oh, you so manage with all the feeding shortage the other day. Did that affect you? No. Oh, you have some? Yeah, it never affects me because we buy feed in like 20, 30 bags at times. Okay. So, so you know, it affects me that bad. Mm -hmm. It's like you're a farm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, Peter, thank you for showing me this side too. Yes, it's so very nice. Alright, I'll go for it.